The joiner has a lot of the same issues we were talking about at the table saw, and of course, similar issues to what we were talking about with the hand tools too. We need to keep the board on the table right. and against the fence. And right. so body position, again, same sort of thing comes into play here too. And we also pay attention to feedback, the way things sound as we're doing it and how it feels as we're going over the board. Sure. Um, every board that we pass over the joiner is a little bit different, uh, both in the board itself and in, in what's going on, but also different size boards. So you sure. know, a big board, a little board. Yep. Um, and I find sometimes that it helps to actually practice with the board. Yep. And so let me show you a couple things here. So again, I'm in the same sort of position and I'm kind of against mm -hmm. my stand here. And as I move forward, I'm going to be leaning against the joiner itself. I'm going to be tight to it. So again, I'm in that contained space where I've got the most control over what's going on. All right. Put this out here for a second. Yeah. And again, I want a nice smooth pass over the joiner while right. it's still in control. Um, so I will start here. This hand tends to be lined up so that this forearm, the pushing forearm, is, is lined up straight. This is a case where we're not in position. I mean, sometimes the, the left hand has to push. It's not in the best position for it. And so True. that's why it's, it's helpful to practice. I, I'm kind of, my push angle is here. And yet I want to go it's that giving you way. against the fence, but not necessarily yeah, the right. forward motion. So this yeah. hand, I'm going to try and hold tight to the fence here. The guard, this is a European style guard. Right. It's a little different than the American guards. And so I'm just going to push forward here. And then it's very helpful to get to the back side, to the outfeed table side of things as you're pushing through. It's much safer out here. Mm -hmm. if, if I lose control of things, if I fall forward, I'm beyond the cutter head already. Right. And so it's it's a good idea to move to the outfeed side as soon as you can under control. I was gonna say that that's that transition point is always a tricky question. So right. And that's why, you know, if I have a smaller board, I might actually practice with that too, and just so I understand how this transition is gonna go. Mm -hmm. Here. Um, a board that's flat on the table requires something different as well. So here, the European guard comes sure. up like this instead of pivoting out of the way, and I go over it like hmm. this, which is a little bit different. Right. When you've got the opportunity and the guard pivots out of the way, a push block like this. Great idea. Something where my hand is out of the way, I glued some sandpaper to the bottom. It grabs the board pretty solidly, but it doesn't work well with the the European, European style card. <laughs> different tools, different methods. Yes. Exactly. So let me show you this with the bigger board. Okay. So you were not, you had a, a nice base against the machine, and you went to the outfeed as soon as you could, and and there's a little smoothly. hand dance yes. going on there. Yeah, we had the foot dance on the saw. We right. had the hand dance here. All right, and a nice smooth even cut, no hesitations, no bumps from the hesitations. A lot of times, if you stop, you leave a little ripple or a yeah, ridge. Right. Um, none of that happened here as a result of this cut. Cool. 